Hello my dear friends, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Travel Lesson for you. Friends, as you know that we are discussing about the skeletal system, the bones of the body. And up to now we have covered about the bones of the lower limb, the hip bone. And then we discussed about the uh, clavicle bone, the scapula. And then in the last lecture I have covered about the humerus bone. Now here we are going to discuss in this lecture about the two bones which are present in your forearm that is the uh, radius and ulna bone right so first of all on the screen you know we have here the radius bone so let us discuss fastly about the all the external features of this radius bone as you know that it's a typical long bone it must have a, an upper end a shaft and a lower end so we will discuss all the features of this bone in detail let us focus on the screen first of all the radius bone you can see here it is located in the lateral compartment of your forearm so it's uh, first of all it is the bone of upper limb the important point then it is present in the lateral part of your forearm so if you see here this is your lateral part of the forearm right so in this part you can see here is the policies right so here will be in the lateral compartment or in the lateral part of your forearm there will be your radius bone Proximally, it makes the humeroradial humero joint, we will say, with humerus. So, if this is your humerus bone, right, and here is your radius bone, this is the capitulum. I had told you in the previous lecture, this is the capitulum, and this is the humeroradial joint, right. So, with the capitulum, and this is called the capitular fossa in the radius bone, the capitular fossa. So, in this fossa, the capitulum fits and makes the humeroradial joint so this is its proximal and first of all humeroradial joint then this is with humerus bone and proximally with radio ulnar joint it also forms so if you have here the ulna bone and this is your radius bone so the head of the humerus bone right will max with the radial facet or radial notch and they will make a joint here so this joint will be called as the radio ulnar joint which is called the proximal radio ulnar joint right so this like this and it helps in the pronation and supination of your hand right so here is the radio ulnar joint so the proximal radio ulnar joint and here in the lower end we also have the distal radio ulnar joint i will discuss it later so proximally it makes two joints with the humerus it makes the humeroradial joint with the ulna bone it makes the hum radio ulnar joint right and distally it makes the carpo radio ulnar joint so distally with the carpal bones with the uh, ulna bone it makes the carpo radio ulnar joint or we call it the wrist joint right let's know about the side determination of this bone how to determine either this this radius bone belongs to your right up forearm or the left forearm so how to determine it look carefully i have written some important points first of all the upper end of this bone is rounded so if you know nothing about this bone right first of all you should go there and see that the upper end of this bone is a little bit rounded and the lower end is a little bit expanded you can differentiate look i have two bones here right you can see here the upper end is a little bit rounded the lower end is a little bit expanded then the lower end is broad okay lateral bone of the forearm then the next important point about it is that you should know that this bone belongs to the lateral bone of your forearm it is lateral part of your forearm then the radial tuberosity is medial you can see here this bone has a very little rough part in the proximal end of it so this is called radial tuberosity i will discuss it this radial tuberosity should be kept medially right should be kept medially like this right and then the sharpest border is medial so you can see here it has some borders the shaft of this bone has some borders so this is the sharpest border right here you can see this is very sharp and these are not sharp borders so this border should be kept kept medially okay For, uh, what are those important points that will help you to recognize the bone is the right bone or the left bone the radial tuberosity should be kept medially the sharpest border should be kept medially and the tubercle of Leicester should be kept posteriorly 
and here in the lower end you have this tubercle and this tubercle is called the tubercle of Lester you can see it right now so this is called the tubercle of Lester so this tubercle should be kept posteriorly so if you keep it like this right this is the tubercle of Lester posteriorly this is the sharpest border medially this is the radial tuberosity medially you will recognize that this bone is the right radius bone and about this bone look this is tubercle of Lister posteriorly radial tuberosity medially and sharpest border also medially you will recognize this bone is the left radius bone so this is the left one and that is the right radius bone I hope you understand it now let us go for the parts of this bone this bone as you know that this is a typical long bone so it must have three important parts and what are those it must have the upper end it must have the shaft and it must have the lower end so here you can see this is the upper end this is the shaft and this is the lower end of this bone let's go fastly for the external features of the upper end of the radius bone so first of all it has a head look here let me color all these important parts first of all it has a head so this is the head of the radius bone right this is its head you can see here right and this uh, head is disc shape and superiorly its concave surface and this is called the capitular fossa so here is the concavity of uh, this uh, the head of this part bone right so this is the concave part this is called the capitular fossa and the circumference is totally articular right we say that this uh, rounded part of this bone is totally articular why because it makes a joint here at the radial notch right radio ulnar joint and then it makes a joint with the capitulum with the radius uh, with the humerus bone so we said this is the uh, capitular fossa and it makes joint with the humerus humero radial joint right we can see here I have shown the head of the bone so the first external feature which is present in the upper ends of this bone is the head then there is the neck of this bone so you can see here is a very sharp uh, very short neck of the bone also there so this is the neck of the bone here in the lower part you can see here this is the neck so neck is there and the third important feature which the upper end of the radius bone has is the radial tuberosity and here we have this rough part and this is called the tuberosity you know in the medical terminology about the uh, osteoskeletal system right we say that tuberosity means rough surface so this is called the radial tuberosity so it is rough part of the bone and posteriorly and it is a little bit smooth anteriorly so if you keep it in anatomical position right like this this is the interior part and this is a little bit posterior part of it so the interior part is little bit smooth and the posterior part is little bit rough right so these three important features are present in the upper end of the radius bone what are those these are the head the head has a disc disc uh, uh, the superior concave surface which is called the capitular fossa and then the circumference of this bone is uh, the head of this part is also articular right and then there is the neck and then there is the radial tuberosity the next important feature uh, we go towards the shaft of this bone and the shaft of this bone has three surfaces and three borders and what are the borders there are three borders the interior border the posterior border and the medial border so the interior border if you keep it in its anatomical position this will be the interior border of this bone the interior border extends from the margin of radial tuberosity you know this is the margin of the radial tuberosity right and it goes of this interior border so this is the interior border of the radial uh, radius bone of the shaft of the radius bone it ends at the styloid process so you know there is the the last part of this uh, lateral uh, uh, you know the lower end has a lateral uh, pointed part and this is called the uh, stylite process so the anterior border ends at the stylite process and it begins at the lateral part of the radial tuberosity so it ends at the stylite process it is oblique in its upper half called the oblique line so you can see here it's a little bit oblique 
right going a little bit towards the lateral side begins at the medial side and goes towards the lateral side so it's a little bit oblique in nature and vertical in the lower half so you know this is totally vertical in the lower half so i have written the interior body extends from the interior margin of the radial tuberosity and ends at the styloid processes and upper half is oblique called oblique line and lower half is totally vertical right then there is the posterior border of this bone so here we have the posterior border in my hand there is the posterior border of this bone right this so the posterior border is same as the interior border it also has an oblique line so you can see here it's a little bit oblique in nature in the upper half it's a little bit oblique in nature and then it goes totally down so you can see here is the little bit obliqueness present there so it's a little bit oblique in the upper half and then it is totally what totally uh, vertical then there is the medial border and this medial border is also known as the interosseous border and it is the shortest border it also begins at the radial tuberosity you can see here this is radial tuberosity and this is your anterior bo medial border and this is the surface border right so it uh, big uh, it's it extends from the radial tuberosity and ends at the radial node so here is your uh, uh, ulnar notch I'm sorry so this is ulnar notch or we also call it the radial notch so here it uh, ends uh, at the ulnar notch or the radial notch so this is your medial border so how many borders the shaft has it has three borders the interior border the posterior border and the medial border and all the details of them I have written there now what about surfaces this bone has surfaces the the shaft of this bone has surfaces and what are those the interior surface so look here this is the interior surface right this is the lateral surface and this is the posterior surface so how many surfaces it has it has three surfaces the interior surface the lateral surface and the posterior surface in the interior surface there is a foramen which is called the neutered foramen and the posterior surface is a little bit rough in nature so how many uh, borders it has it has three borders and how many surfaces three surfaces the anterior the lateral and the posterior surface now about the lower end of this bone the lower end of this bone right it, i have written that the lower end is a little bit wider and it has five surfaces and what are those surfaces there is anterior surface there is the posterior surface there is the medial surface there is the lateral surface and then there is the inferior surface so how many surfaces anterior posterior lateral medial and inferior surface it has three surfaces let us go for the detail of the surfaces of the lower end of this radius bone first there is the interior surface so you can see here this is the interior surface of this bone it's very smooth in nature right so this is interior surface then there is the posterior surface so you see here this is the posterior surface so posterior surface is a little bit rough and it has some grooves in it so you can see here this is a groove there's another groove and here's another groove so there are five grooves present in the posterior surface and then there is a tubercle which is called the tubercle of Lister so you can see see here we have also mentioned it tubercle of Lister and this is the tubercle of Lister I will show you there so this is tubercle of Lister you can see it here right okay so the interior surface is smooth the posterior surface has four grooves and it has a tubercle which is called tubercle of Lester then there is a medial surface and medial surface has an ulnar notch in it so you can see this is the radius bone and this is the ulna bone so this uh, uh, the medial surface of this radius bone there you can see it has the ulnar notch in it so here is your ulnar notch my dear friends so this is the medial surface why because this uh, ulna bone is present in the medial compartment right so that's why we say this this part is called the ulnar notch present there and then there is the lateral surface and this lateral surface has the important feature which is called the styloid process so you can see i have shown it with green color there and i will show it again here also with green color so this is the styloid process in the lateral part or in the lateral surface of this bone styloid process and then there is the inferior surface so the inferior surface is triangular area and quadrangular area so you can see here is the quadrangular area and this is the triangular area it forms the wrist joint so 
the inferior surface is divided into two areas the triangular area which is little bit medially and uh, uh, yeah medially and the quadrangular area which is present which is uh, located uh, laterally right and it forms the rest joint so friends this was about the radius bone now in the next lecture we will discuss about the ulna bone and all the external features of the ulna bone also so friends that's the end of the lecture regarding the radius bone so i hope you will watch the lecture and you will like it and you will understand all the external features of this radius bone see you guys in the next lecture i will discuss about the ulna bone thank you so much